In this video, we are going to learn how to use Dapper in the ASP.NET Core Web API project. We are going to talk about Dapper overall, how to use different queries and executions, how to execute store procedures, and how to create multiple queries inside the transaction. If you prefer reading about this topic and also want to download the source code, feel free to visit the article on the Codemaze blog site. The link is in the description below. Dapper is a micro ORM, object relational mapper, which we can use to communicate with the database in our projects. By using Dapper, we can write SQL statements as we like to do in the SQL Server. Dapper has great performance because it doesn't translate queries that we write in .NET to SQL. It is important to know that Dapper is SQL injection safe because we can use parameterized queries and that's something we should always do. One more important thing is that Dapper supports multiple database providers. It extends ADO.NET's IDB connection and provides useful extension methods to query our database. Of course, we have to write queries compatible with our database provider. When we talk about these extension methods, we have to say that Dapper supports both synchronous and asynchronous method executions. In this video, we are going to use the asynchronous version of those methods. So, let's learn more about these extension methods. To do that, let's visit our article. We can see that Dapper extends the IDB connection interface with several methods. Execute, Query, Query First, Query First or Default, Query Single, Query Single or Default, and Query Multiple. Also, we can see that all of these methods come with the async functionality execute async, query async, query first async, and so on. Of course, you can see from the description what each method does. And by looking at that, we can see that some of them are pretty similar to the link methods, like first, first or default, single, single or default. Now, after we are familiar with Dapper and its methods, we can start with our project. We have created an empty ASP.NET Core Web API project and named it Dapper ASP.NET Core. After the project creation, the first thing we are going to do is to create a new database. To do that, let's open the SQL Server Object Explorer and right-click on the database folder. Let's select the Add New Database option and let's name it Dapper. Now, we have to create our tables and populate them. To do that, we will use the script we already prepared in our source code, which you can download, of course, by visiting our article. So, let's right-click on the database and open a new query window. Here, we are going to paste our prepared script. Let's rename this to just Dapper and inspect the rest of the script. We can see that we create a companies table with a few columns and that we do the same for the employees table. Also, we have several insert commands to add the records in our tables. Now we can execute this query and check that our database has two tables. And there we go. We can now close this. With this out of the way, we can install the required packages to work with Dapper. Let's open the package manager console and Install package Dapper. Also, we need to install another package, Microsoft.data.sql client. After a few seconds, the package will be installed. To continue, let's create a simple repository in our project so we could use it to communicate with our database. We will make it simple without any additional complications. That said, let's navigate to the Solution Explorer, add a new folder, and name it Entities. In this folder, we are going to create two classes. Let's create the first one and name it Employee. This class will have the same property names as the columns from the Employees table. So let's add an int id property, string name, 
int age string position and int company id after this we have to add another class in the same folder and name it company then let's add the first int id property then string name also string address string country and lastly the list of employee named employees and instantiated with the new list employee this is our navigational property between the two classes now let's navigate to the app settings file to add the connection string let's add the connection strings key here and assign it an object with the SQL connection key and for the value we will provide the string with the server equals dot database set to dapper and integrated security set to true of course feel free to modify this connection string to fit your needs also one more important note here since the Microsoft Data SQL Client Package version 4, if your database is not using encryption, any connection will fail by default. So you might get an error with your first request that states that a connection was successfully established with the server, but then an error occurred during the login process. If you face such an error, just modify the connection string to include encryption set to false. Now let's open the Solution Explorer window one more time and create a new folder named context and inside a new class. We'll name it Dapper Context. Here let's create a new private read only i configuration configuration variable and let's create a constructor that initializes this field. We are going to use this field to access our configuration file. Next, let's add one more private read only string field named connection string. Then, in the constructor, we are going to use the configuration field and the get connection string method to get our connection string with the SQL connection name. Lastly, we're going to create a public IDB connection method and name it create connection. This method will return a new SQL connection where we have to provide our connection string. We will soon see the usage of this method in our queries. Now, with this prepared, we have to register this class as a service. To do that, Let's navigate to the program class and call builder.services.addSingleton method to register this class as a singleton service. To continue, let's create two new folders. Let's start with the first one, which we are going to name contracts, and then the second one and name it repository. In the contracts folder, we are going to create a new interface and name it iCompany repository. And in the repository folder, we are going to create a new class and name it company repository. Let's inherit from the iCompany repository interface and then let's add a new private read only dapper context field named context. Of course, let's use a constructor to initialize this field. We can make it one liner if you want. With this in place, we're going to navigate to the program class again and register a new service by calling builder.services.addScoped method 
and provide the iCompany repository interface as the first parameter and the company repository class as the second. And we are done with our preparation. This means we can continue towards our first Dapper query. Let's start with an example where we return all the companies from our database. The first thing we're going to do is to modify our interface. Let's add a new public task ienumerable company member and name it get companies. Then let's navigate to the repository class and implement the missing member. The first thing we're going to do here is to make this method async. Then we're going to create a new query variable and assign an SQL select star from companies statement to it. Next, let's add a using directive. Inside, we'll create a new connection variable and call context.createConnection method to create our connection. As you can see, as soon as we stop using our connection, we have to dispose of it. Inside the using directive, we will create a new companies variable and await connection dot query async method. Provide the type for our result, which is company, and pass a query as an argument. The query async method will execute the SQL statement that we store inside the query variable. After this, we are going to return our companies converted to a list. Since the query async method returns i enumerable of t, we want to convert it to a list as soon as we need to return a result. It is important to notice that we use a strongly typed result from the query async method. But Dapper supports anonymous results as well. That said, in this video, we are going to use the strongly typed methods only. After this implementation, we can use this method in our controller. Of course, we have to create it. So let's navigate to the controllers folder and add a new API empty controller and name it companies controller. So before we continue, let's modify this generic route parameter to just companies. Now let's add a new private read-only iCompany repository company repo variable and let's initialize it over the constructor. Next let's add the HTTP GET attribute and create a public async task I action result action and name it get companies. Inside it, we will create a companies variable and await the company repo dot get companies method. And finally, just return the OK result with our fetched companies. This logic is pretty straightforward without any additional complexity. But that said, Let's add a few notes here. Since we don't have any kind of business logic, we didn't create a service layer to wrap our repository layer. For this type of application, the service layer would just call repository methods and nothing more, which would just add an unnecessary level of complexity to the project. Of course, we always recommend using the service layer in larger scale applications. And if you want to learn how to do that properly, you can read our Onion Architecture article. Also, to avoid additional complexity, we are not handling exceptions with try-catch blocks in our action. Again, we strongly suggest handling those exceptions. But to avoid code repetition, we suggest watching our global error handling video to see how you can create a centralized handler. All the links will be in the description below. That said, let's test our logic. Let's start our application and let's use the already prepared Postman request. 
after we hit that send button, we can see our two companies in the response body. Great, let's now return to the project. Right now, all the properties from the company class have the same names as the columns inside the company's table. But what would happen if those don't match? Let's check it out. First, let's now get to the company class and modify the name property to the company name. Now, let's start the app again and send the same request. We can see that the company name property is null here. This is because Dapper can't map in the way that we wrote our query. It means we have to change something in our project. So, let's navigate to the repository class and modify the query inside the getCompanies method. We are going to add the real column names here instead of the star. So, let's add ID and name, but this time we are going to use as company name. And also, let's add address and country. Now, let's start the app again. And let's send the same request from Postman. This time, we can see the company name property populated. As we said at the beginning of this video, Dapper supports parameterized queries, making it 100% SQL injection safe. It supports anonymous, dynamic, list, string, and table valued parameters. For this example, we are mostly going to use dynamic and anonymous parameters. That said, let's start with the iCompany repository interface modification. Here, we'll add a new public task company get company member with the int id as a parameter. Next, let's navigate to the company repository class and implement the interface. The first thing to do here is to make this method async. Then let's create a query variable and add the select star from companies where id equals add id. This add id parameter will receive a value once we execute our query. Next, let's add a using directive and create a connection by calling context.createConnection. Inside, we're gonna create a company variable and await connection dot query single or default async with a company as a generic type. And provide the query as the first parameter and a new anonymous object with the ID property that we accept in this method as a parameter for our SQL statement. Finally, we can return the company. To continue, let's navigate to the controller, where we are going to add another action. First, let's add a new HTTP GET attribute. And this time, it accepts two parameters, the ID from the URI and the name company by ID. Then, let's create a public async task I action result action and name it get company with a single int id parameter. Inside the action, we'll create a company variable and await repository dot get company method with the id as an argument. If a company is null, we will return just not found. If it's not, Let's return OK with our company. That's it. We can start our app now. And use another request in Postman with the ID provided in the URI. Let's send this request. And we can find our result. So, this works great. Now, we are going to handle a POST request in our API and use the execute async method to create a new company entity in the database. 
the first thing we are going to do is to add a new folder. Name it DTO. And inside it, let's add a new class. We're going to name it Company for Creation DTO. We're going to use this class for the post request parameter. Here, let's add a new string name property, string address, and string country. Do not explain what are the benefits of using DTOs in API, but if you want to learn more about it and how to use it with the different requests, you can check out our two videos for handling GET and for handling POST, PUT and DELETE requests. You can find the links in the description below. Now, to continue, let's navigate to the interface and add another member. We'll have a public task create company with the company for creation DTO parameter named company. Then let's navigate to the repository class and implement our interface. Okay, here is the method. So let's make it async. Then, as usual, let's create a query variable and add an SQL statement. This time we are going to use one to insert the record in the table. So let's write insert into companies and then provide the columns we want to use. Name, address and country. And then provide the values as parameters. At name, at address and at country. After this, we're going to create a parameters variable and assign it a new dynamic parameters instance. Then let's use the parameters variable and call the add method to add a new parameter. We have to provide the name, then a value as company.name and the type of parameter, which is dbType.string. Let's remove this and import the using statement. Now let's copy this line and paste it two more times. Modify name to address here as well. And in the last parameter, modify to country and here again. Once we have our parameters ready, we can add a new using directive and create a connection by calling the context.createConnection method. Finally, inside the directive, we will await connection.executeAsync method and provide our query and our parameters. That's it. We want to explain one thing here. If you call this method in our controller and pass a company for creation to it, it will create a new entity for us. But while creating APIs post action, it is a good practice to return a link which the APIs users can use to navigate to the created entity. With this method's implementation as is, we are not able to do that. So now we know how to create a new record in the table using Dapper. But let's improve the solution. First, let's revisit our interface and modify our create company member to return a company. Then let's get back to repository class and add a couple of modifications to our method. First, let's modify the query. Let's add a plus sign to move the query to a new line and add select cast scope identity as int. So now we are executing two commands, the first one to create a new record and the second one to return the last identity value inserted into an identity column in the same scope. Now let's move to the using directive body and replace this with our new code. We are going to create a new ID variable 
and await the connection dot query single async int method. We reprovide the query and parameters. This means that we will execute the insert command and the select command from our query parameter and also return the id result from the select command. Next, let's create a new created company object and assign a new company instance and set the id property to the value of the id variable. Name to company.name address to company.address and country to company.country. Lastly, we are going to return this created company. Of course, we have an error here because we changed the name property to company name in our company class. So let's just navigate to the company class and modify this to just name. Now, let's return to the repository class and just add a company return type here. With this out of the way, we can navigate to our controller. Here, let's add a new HTTP POST attribute and then add a public async task I action result action and name it create company. We will provide the from body company for creation DTO company parameter. Inside the action, let's create a new created company variable and await company repo dot create company method with our company as an argument. After this, all we have to do is to return created at route add a name of the route, which is company by ID, add a new anonymous object with a single ID property, assigned with created company dot ID property, and add our created company object as the last argument. Now let's test this. Let's start our app and navigate to Postman. Here we'll use the already prepared post request with the request body and the headers. So let's send it. And as a result, we can see our newly created company. Also, if we inspect the headers tab, we can see the location for our new entity. Let's copy it, paste it in a new request and send the request. And we see this works great. Working with update and delete is now pretty simple because we already have all the knowledge we require. So let's just jump straight to the code. First, let's open Solution Explorer and in the DTO folder, create a new class and name it Company for Update DTO. This class will have the same properties as our previous DTO. So let's open it, copy all the properties and paste them in a new class. Next, let's navigate to the interface and add two more members. The first one public task update company with the int ID as the first parameter and the company for update DTO company as the second parameter. The second member will be also public task but named delete company with a single int ID parameter. As usual, let's open the company repository class now. And first minimize all the methods with the control M O shortcut. Now Let's implement the missing members. First, let's modify the update method. Let's make it async and then create a new query variable and add an update SQL statement. So, let's write update companies 
set name equals at name address equals at address and country equals at country where id equals at id then we need our parameters so let's add a new parameters variable and instantiate it with a new dynamic parameters class we can use the add method to add our first parameter provide the name the value which is our id method parameter and the type of db type int 32 then let's copy this line and paste it three more times here we will change the name here to company.name and modify type to string let's do the same for the address which is of the string type as well and also for the country with the string type again then we need the using directive and create a new connection using the same create connection method and all we have to do inside is to call await connection dot execute async and provide the query and the parameters after this implementation we can move on to the delete method and make it async first then we need a query and let's write delete from companies where id equals at id next let's add a using directive and inside create a connection by calling the context.create connection method finally we will await connection execute async method with the query and the new anonymous object with a single id property now the next stop is our controller here we add a new HTTP put attribute with a single ID URI parameter then let's create a public async task I action result action and name it update company it will have two parameters the first one int ID and from body company for update DTO company as a second parameter now let's add a new db company variable and call await company repo dot get company with id as an argument to fetch our company if it's a null we return not found and if it's not it means we found company and we can update it by calling await company repo dot update company and pass id and the company as arguments and finally return no content after the update action let's implement the delete action so we need the http delete attribute with a single id ui parameter then let's add a public async task I action result action and name it delete company here we provide a single int id parameter now since the implementation is almost identical to the previous one let's copy this update implementation and paste it here and then modify the repository method call from update to delete and remove the company argument and that's all it takes this action also returns to a full no content after the successful delete action now let's start the app and use our already created postman request first let's send the put request and we get 204 result also 
let's open the delete request and send it. And here as well, we get 204. So everything works great. We've seen how to execute different queries with Dapper, but we can also execute store procedures with it pretty easily. Let's see how to do that. First, we have to create a stored procedure. So let's open the SQL Object Explorer window, expand this folder, and then right click on this one and choose Add Store Procedure. Now we can modify this template. Let's modify the name of the procedure to show company by employee ID. Then let's remove this first parameter and modify the name of the second one to ID. Next, let's modify the select statement. We are going to remove this and implement a from part first. So let's add from companies C join employees E on C.ID equals E.companyID. We also need where E.ID equals at ID parameter that we accept in this procedure. Now let's add what we want to select C.ID, C.name, C.address, and C.country. And remove this last return statement. That's it, a straightforward implementation. All we have to do is to execute this procedure. Click this button and we can see that the action was completed successfully. We can now close this down without saving. With the store procedure in place, we can move on to the interface modification. Let's add a new public task company get company by employee ID member with int ID parameter. Next, let's navigate to the repository class and implement our missing method. Then let's make it async. Inside it, we're going to create a procedure name variable and add the name of our created procedure. Show company by employee ID. Next, let's add a new parameters variable and instantiate it with the new dynamic parameters class. To add our parameter, we will use the add method and provide the name, the value, the type, which is db type int 32, and the parameter direction dot input as a direction parameter for our store procedure. We are choosing input here because we are sending this parameter to our procedure or in other words, procedure accepts this parameter as input. Now, with the using directive, we have to create a connection variable and use context.createConnection to create our connection. Inside, let's add a new company variable and await connection that query first or default async method with the company as a generic parameter. Now we have to provide several arguments. The name of the procedure, the parameters, and the command type as command type dot stored procedure. Just one note here. Because our store procedure returns a result, because we execute the select statement inside it, we use the query first or default async method to execute it. On the other hand, if your store procedure doesn't return a value, you can use the execute async method for the execution. That said, let's just return the company from this method. Lastly, let's navigate to our controller and implement a new action. So let's add a new HTTP GET attribute with the by employee ID addition and a single ID parameter. 
then we need a public async task I action result action and name it get company for employee and provide the int id parameter as for the implementation we would use already familiar logic so let's create a company and await company repo dot get company by employee id method that will execute our store procedure and let's send id as an argument if our method returns null we will return not found on the other hand we return ok company with this implemented we can start the app and let's send a postman request to our newly created endpoint as you can see we want to get the company with id2 so let's hit that send button and we get our company which means that we successfully executed our store procedure inside the database with dapper we can easily execute multiple sql statements and return multiple results in a single query let's see how to do that with an example as always we'll modify our interface first let's add public task company get multiple results with int id as a parameter okay let's go to the repository class now and implement the missing member as usual let's make the method async first then we're going to create a query variable with multiple select statements let's add a first one select star from companies where id equals at id and also another one in a new line select star from employees where company id equals at id so here we want to return a single company by id in the first query and all the employees for the company in the second query now we need a using directive and add a connection with context.create connection method we can remove these parentheses because we are going to add another using directive below here we'll create a multivariable and await connection dot query multiple async where we pass our query variable and an anonymous object with a single id property the query multiple async method will extract multiple results from the database and store it inside the multi variable now let's add a company variable and call await and extract the first result from the multi variable by calling the read single or default async method and provide a company as a generic parameter if our company is not null we can populate the company.employees property with a second result so let's await multi dot read async and provide the employee as a generic parameter we also want to cast result to list so let's add parentheses here and call the to list method finally let's return our company now let's navigate to the controller and add a new http get attribute with the id parameter and additional multiple result part then we're gonna add a new public async task i action result action named get multiple results with int id as a parameter next all we have to do is to create a new company variable and call the await 
company repo dot get multiple results method where we have to provide our ID parameter as an argument. Let's check if the company is null. And if it is, return not found. On the other hand, let's return OK with our company. Now, let's start the app to test this logic and send already prepared request. And there we go. We can see the result containing both the company and all the employees for that company. In a previous example, we've used two SQL statements to return two results and then join them together in a single object. But usually, for such queries, we don't want to write two SQL statements. We want to use a join clause and create a single SQL statement. Of course, if you write it like that, we can't use the query multiple async method anymore. We have to use a multiple mapping technique with the well-known query async method. So let's see how we can do it. As usual, we are going to start with the interface modification. Let's add public task list company multiple mapping. Then let's navigate to the repository class and let's implement our interface. Let's start by making the method async. Then let's create a query and add select star from companies C join employees E on C.id equals E.companyID. After the select statement, we're going to create a using directive and a new connection variable where we call context.create connection method. To help us with the process of extracting our results, we are going to use a dictionary. So let's add a company dict variable and instantiate a new dictionary with the int key and company as value. Next, let's create a companies variable and await connection dot query async method with three generic parameters company, employee, and company again. The first two types are the input types we are going to work with, and the last type is the return type. Now we have to pass parameters to the query async method. So let's add a query as the first one and a func delegate with company and employee as parameters. Inside the delegate, we want to use our dictionary and call the try get value method to find the entry with the specified key company.id and extract that value inside the current company variable. And we will negate this. So basically, we want to do something in the body of the if statement only if we can't find the company for the required key in our dictionary. If we can't find it, let's add to current company the value of our company parameter. And let's call the company dict add method to add new entry with the current company.id as key and current company as value. Otherwise, if we find the company in our dictionary, we have to add an employee to this company by calling current company dot employees dot add and pass an employee parameter. Also, we have to return our current company. Finally, after the query async implementation, we will return companies distinct to list. Now, let's just navigate to our controller and paste the previous action here. The implementation of this new action will be very similar to the previous one, so we can use an existing functionality of the previous action. 
Let's first modify the HTTP GET attribute by removing the ID parameter and adding here mapping instead of a result. Then let's modify the name to get multiple mapping and remove the ID parameter. In the body, let's call a different method, remove this check and we can also modify the name of the variable because we will return a collection from the multiple mapping result. Now let's start our app, navigate to Postman and send the already prepared request. And we can see our result. So everything works great. The last thing we want to do in this video is to show you how you can implement transactions with Dapper. Transactions are pretty simple to use with Dapper. We can execute it by using the Dapper library, the one we already use, or by using the Dapper.transaction library, which is basically the same thing as Dapper, just with the extended IDB connection interface. In our example, we are going to use the Dapper library. We are going to show you just the repository method where we will implement a transaction. All the rest is pretty simple as we repeated the steps several times in this video. Of course, in our source code, you can find a complete implementation. And as you mentioned, you can find it by visiting our article, which is linked in the description below. Now, let's navigate to the repository class and add a new method. Let's add public async task create multiple companies method with the list of company for creation DTO parameter named companies. The first thing we're going to do is to create a query variable and add an insert statement. So let's write insert into companies provide name, address and country and values at name, at address and at country. Then let's create a using directive inside new connection variable and create connection with context.createConnection method. This time we have to open the connection with connection.open method. Then let's create another using directive and inside a new transaction variable and add connection.begin transaction. With this method we will start our transaction. Then inside the using let's create for each loop add a company variable in all the companies and then create parameters variable and instantiate it with the new dynamic parameters class. Let's use parameters.add method with the parameter name, company.name as a value and dbtype.string as a type. Then let's copy this line and paste it two more times. Let's modify this to address and here as well. And let's modify this to country and here as well. Then inside for each loop still, let's call await connection.execute async and provide query, parameters and create a transaction as a last argument. Finally, let's call transaction.commit to commit our transaction. As you can see, it is pretty easy to implement transactions with Dapper. Of course, to simulate an error and test that no rows will be created in the database, you can simply throw an exception right below the await code line. The app will call the execute async method once to try to execute the query. 
but then the exception will be thrown and the transaction should revert any changes. You should find no new rows in the table. So that's it. Please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down there if you like the video and want to support us. You can also use that bell button to get notifications from our channel. Also, you can visit the CodeMaze blog to download the source code. And you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.